In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the basics of programming. Um, we're going to write into a script file or a function file uh, some programming commands. Before we start in, into basic programming constructs, I want to talk about uh, logicals and Boolean variables, logicals, and uh, decision making. So we can have uh, what's called a logical one. And the answer is one. It doesn't look very impressive. And over in the workspace, we see it has this little tick mark, and its class is logical. To the computer, that means yes and zero. Well, not not zero, the the number or the uh, the integer is zero, but the logical zero to a computer means no. And with these ideas of true, well, yes and no, or true and false we can devise a number of uh, or comparisons and make decisions based on the results of those comparisons. So to do comparisons, we need comparison operators. So let me just make, instead of carrying around logical 1, logical 0, let me make um, some variables. So I'll have um, b is equal to, well, let's start with a. All right, a is equal to logical 0, and b is equal to logical one. Uh, once I cover this logical business, you probably never will see the function logical again, but uh, it's important to understand the distinction. This is a logical uh, Boolean variable. So now that I have these variables, and there they are over in the workspace, A and B up here in the right hand corner, I can now do comparisons. So obvious comparisons uh, at a true and false level will be um, A is equal to B. And because A is false and B is true, uh, the answer is false. And that answer should also be illogical. And there it is up here. Um, so let's wrap all that in brackets. And I'll, instead of just printing it to the screen, I'll put it into an answer variable. Uh, so let's call it result. So let's, let's call it true. Uh, that's too confusing. Result is fine. So result will be equal to the answer to the question, is A equal to B? And the answer is no. Um, what else? Is A not equal to B? The answer is yes. Um, so there are basic comparisons we can do. We can also do logical ands. So um, result of A and B. So logical and means it's sort of like multiplication. Is A true and B true? The answer is no. Um, is a true, don't need spaces here, but it just makes it easier to read. Or, so for the, the logical or is two vertical bars, or is A true or B true? And the answer is yes, at least one of them is true, and it's the, um, the B value which is true, it takes the value one. Uh, so that's logical uh, comparisons. There are um, comparisons, with similar comparisons we can do based on non-logical variables. So if I had x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4, I could also ask the question, result um, is x equal to y? And the answer is no. Um, is x not equal to y? And the answer is yes, x is not equal to y. It's a bit confusing. Uh, we can also use uh, magnitude comparison uh, values here. So is lex is x less than y? Uh, x is 3 and y is 4, so the answer will be yes, true. Uh, is x less than or equal to y? Yes, also true. Is x greater than y? And you get the idea, greater than or equal to. Um, and I think that pretty much covered them all. Um, OK, so that's comparison operators. And it's pretty useful because we'll use these com the results of these comparisons to steer um, the the behavior, the flow of a program. So let's start writing our program now. Uh, so let's go and create a new M file. Uh, you can write programs in script files or in uh, in function files. I'm going to do it as a script. So um, this is a programming script. Just to remind myself what it is. I'll save it as Give it a name, maybe basic um, program, and we're ready to go. So uh, 
there's two main uh, constructs that allow you to program that change the flow of the program, the direction in which it goes based on these comparisons, and they're if statements and loops. So let's start with if statements. So I can have x equals 6, and then I can have if, and every if has an end, so this is now going to be a block of code. The first line is going to be the decision, uh, it's going to be a comparison, and then if the comparison is true, then we'll go inside and execute some code. So what do I mean? So I might ask the question, is x greater than 6? And the comparison will be true or false. In this case, it's not. It's going to be false. Um, and I might display something inside using the display function. And I can type some text. Uh, yes, x is greater than 6. Six factorial, <laughs> full stop. Uh, save that and let's run it. So I'll type basic program and nothing happens. And the reason is x is not greater than six. Um, let's change that to is x greater than five. And now when I run it, uh, let's run from the command line. I get yes, it prints out x is greater than six, which I should now change to five. Yes, x is greater than 5. Okay, so that's an if statement. But I could also have an if combined with an else. So these all go together as part of the same block. And so I have if, and if this is true, this comparison, uh, then display to the screen. Else, so else catches it. Whatever else happens, uh, this is what will happen. Whatever is typed in here, and I will say no x is not greater than 5. So when I run it, I get yes, x is greater than 5. But if I change x to be 3, and I run it, I get no, x is not greater than 5. So when the code executes, it executes line by line. It will come into the script at the top. It will set the variable x to be equal to 3. Then it will check the first if statement. Um, and the result of this, remember we just did such comparisons a while back, this will be a true or false. So if, and that will execute to be true or false, x greater than 5, in this case here, uh, it's false, so we get 0. It jumps over this entire block, so this line will not execute, and then it says else, which means no matter what else has happened, then we're going to run this line here in this prints. There's one final part of the construct. We can also have an else if. So we can test multiple things. So we, we want to say, if x is greater than 5, then display this. Or we could say, else if, well, maybe x is just greater than 4. And we could say, display, yes, x is greater than 4. Else, we would say, x is not greater than 5 or greater than 4. So let's try that. So think about what's going to happen here. x is 3, so it's not going to enter this one or this one, and it's going to say not greater than 5 or 4. But if I now make x equal to 5, it's going to enter this part of the if statement, but not the first part. So it says, yes, x is greater than 4. And now if I make it 6, I get x is greater than 5. And you see that once one part of the statement executes, it skips over all of the remaining and exits and leaves at the bottom of the script. So because this one was chosen, the rest were ignored, and so on. So that's if, else if, and else statements. That's one part. The next part of programming is loops. So there are two different types of loops, the for loop and a while loop. The for loop is the easiest to use, um, so we'll talk about the for loop first. So I can say, um, let's delete this just to make some space. I'm going to write some code which will sum up the numbers from uh, 1 to 20. And so every every odd number from 1 to 20, so 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. So I can say 4 
and every four statement will have an end. And you see that MATLAB has naturally, it will naturally, oh, here we go. I should indent when I go to the next line uh, just to keep the code tidy. So I'll show you some more examples as we as we code on further. So let's do um, x is equal to um, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. I'm purposely writing all this out to show you that this is not the clever way to do it. Uh, what did I say? Twenty. So one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen. I'm going to have some count variable out here, which is equal to zero at the start, and then I will add up. So count is equal to count plus x. And then maybe I'll um, I'll just type count here so it displays on the screen. So what if I run this one now? Uh, let's actually remove the semicolon here as well, so we can see what the count is as it, as it runs up. Um, so we see that every time through the loop, uh, count printed. Don't ignore these colors here. That's just MATLAB asking me, and uh, do I want to do some some things with these variables? Um, count was one, which because x was one, so it was zero plus one equals. And that's what count becomes. And then the next time through the loop, count will now be one. The, the value is stored from the last time, so it will be now one plus three becomes four. That's what we get down here. Then the next four is the value for count the next time round. So we get four plus five, which is what goes into x, becomes nine. I'll do one more example. So nine will go around. We'll have nine plus next in the list is seven, which takes x takes the value of seven. So nine and seven gives sixteen. And so it goes and uh, the sum of all those odd numbers turns out to be, when we get to the bottom, 100. Okay. So you can put any array in here at all that you want x to take the value of each time through the loop. Some standard ones people will do is just use the um, colon operator to say, um, I could have done this, would have had the same effect. So from 1 in steps of 2 up to 20. So that will do 1, 3, 5, 7. And this will do just the same. So I get count as 100 at the end. Uh, very, very common that you'll end up just going up in steps of 1. So I could add the numbers from uh, 1 to 20, um, and I get 210. OK, so that's for loops. A uh, different type of loop is a while loop. So for loop is good if you know exactly what you want to do and when you want to stop. But a while loop is when you've got a bit more uncertainty in when you're going to stop and you just keep testing a condition, a logical condition, to see when to stop. Uh, it can also be used for counting. So let's use a similar example. So we'll have count um, and we'll have some variable x is equal to, uh, let's say, do the same one, 20. And we'll count down for 20. And I can say, so a while loop starts with a while statement and it always ends with an end. I'll say while, well, while what? While x is um, greater than 0, I'll say count equals count plus x. And then I need to reduce the value of x. x is equal to x minus 1. This is the difference with while loops, is that you actually have to change the counting variable by hand. So I'm going to count down, so it's going to go uh, 8, 20, 19, 18, all the way down, and every time it drops down, it will just before it will add it on. So it'll be first, so first time through, count is zero, so it'll be zero plus x is 20 equals count, and then it will do 19, then 18, and so on. We'll keep adding on to count until it finishes. So let's have a go at this one, and we get the same answer as expected. So 210 for the count. Um, could also have gone steps of two. Should get the uh, 100 this time. Oh, 110. Why is that? Because I stopped when it's greater than zero instead of when x is greater than one. Let's try that. Ooh. Okay. 20. No, oh, I need to start at 19. Okay. Sorry. Um, let's try again. Determined to get this right. There we go. Uh, so that's the sum of the odd numbers from 1 to 20. Uh, so that's the while loop. 
and I spoke already about uh, indentation. I can indent code. It's, it's just very good practice to indent code because I can easily see that this while drop down below it is matched perfectly with the end at the bottom and all the code belonging to that block is indented by one indent level. If you want to indent code quickly you can highlight the code that you want and use control and square brackets. So the right bracket goes out to the right and the left bracket goes to the left. If you want to have other code inside, so it might be might say something like um, if x is equal to 9, I can maybe print something on the screen, I'd say um, just for example, hey, x is 9. And so now we see that all of this code is belonging to a while loop because it's indented to that level. But this code is indented even further, and that belongs to the if statement. Um, and if I run this one, um, maybe I'll not print that to the screen. Um, so somewhere in that program when it ran, it said, hey, x is 9. And then at the bottom, I print out the, the count onto the screen, because there's no semicolon there. Okay.